Hello everyone, I'm Eva Vikio, I'm director of film Krzyk Losing Control, and you're watching Film EO. It is Lauren Delisa Coleman back with another interview during South by Southwest. <laughs> What is going on everybody? It's Lauren Delisa Coleman still inside of the Filmio Filmmakers Lounge right here at South by Southwest 2024 and we are about to get into an interesting interview because this is actually even for myself one of the first ever like grad student films that I think I've ever had the pleasure of like going inside of. So join me in this little journey right now. We are going to be learning all about losing control. I am fortunate enough to have with me the filmmaker and her DP, who are respectively from Poland and Germany, flew in for South by Southwest, managing the jet lag vibe and just like really <laughs> making the rounds here at South by. And I am just so happy to be able to have you guys, right? So um, I wanna hear like just all about, I guess the part that the German um, Film and Television Academy uh, have kind of played in this, which is based in Berlin, how you like kind of devise the story, so much more. Let's tar start first, I guess, with what is Losing Control about, Eva? And I didn't even introduce you, sorry. This is Eva Vickiel. Hello. And Konstantin Minish. I feel like I've been talking to them off camera so much. You guys like candidly before, I almost forgot, like now they're my new best friends. Um, so yes. Um, Eva, talk to me about what this film is giving the audience. So, Losing Control is a film about loss, and the main character uh, witnesses a car crash on the highway and sees the burning cars and hears the scream. And from that moment, she cannot fall asleep anymore. And the more she gets involved into the life of the deceased one, the more she loses herself into that. So slowly she becomes that woman. And this happens until the moment when she needs to control, uh, confront with her own life. And what is really, really important to mention here that our character like had a loss. So, so the film like is about topic of the film. It's about also miscarriage and stillbirth. And we wanted to to make a film about the subject which is so important yet not like yet unspoken in the in the cinema nowadays right we were talking um very much about you know kind of the film kind of scene in the industry in poland how i feel that you know maybe it's just like my personal exposure but that i'm just coming across more and more films from poland which are really um, just so creative in their approach and typically as we said you know this is about miscarriage um, other films kind of touching what we might consider taboo you know kind of subjects um, I think that that is obviously you know the case of the 365 which blew up as we know on on Netflix but I've also found other films you know from from Poland on other platforms which you just find these really interesting takes mm -hmm. um, dealing with women and um, I'm just wondering if you could speak to that, you know, a little bit more of how kind of the, your culture plays in the part or what part it does play in your filmmaking and kind of the conception of the stories itself. So, so my Polish heritage plays a huge role because we decided to, to like put the scene and, and the, the action of the film in, in, which in a Polish film city, which is called Polish Detroit, actually. Like we, we called it city like this. and. You know, I'm born and raised in Poland, so I couldn't imagine not shooting this film in, in, in Poland. Like, even if I studied in Berlin, you know, that was for me, like, a very important point of coming back home to, to shoot the first feature, you know, because I do believe that, that we can say, like, the most when we are close to where we come from, where, where we, you know, like, keep our core identity. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how did you come together with Constantine? It was this through the Academy or tell me a little bit about this. Have you guys been working together for a while on this mm -hmm. as you know your stu student project or what? So I'm, um, we, we went to the same film school and uh, we studied together there and then along the years we I don't know we, we haven't seen each other so often and so I left school already then and uh, I think it was 2000, 
2020, right? 2021. 2021, when you called me and you, you said, um, listen, there's a, I have a, a screenplay you might be interested in that because you ever knew what films I like and yeah. what kind of cinema um, I appreciate. And so I read it and this was, um, I said, okay, let's do it immediately. So it was really like, um, when I just the pitch deck was um, was really was really uh, breathtaking, and I thought, okay, let's do that together. Yeah. And it was already the funding was already there, and um, but <laughs> it was still uh, it was COVID, so the project was postponed, and so it was it was really hard to uh, actually start with the with the shooting. And uh, yeah. Yeah. so once you did start, how long did it take you to be able to shoot? So once we started, it was like 27 shooting days in Poland and three shooting days in Germany. And so it was six, hmm. uh, six weeks all together. Okay. And it was like an amazing journey, really like, you know, like to wake up every day and go to the film set. And I can tell we were shooting like basically in, in Poland, in, in Łódź, in this Polish film city. And what, what was so special about it, we shot in one place in four time zones. So you know, like in Eastern European time zone, New York time zone, um, Pacific time zone, because of the like different hours of starting the film set. And we have a lot of like, you'll see in our film, there are a lot of like night scenes because we wanted to set film, you know, on the highway in this dark um, scenography. Yeah. How interesting. So now tell me, is this the culmination of your studies at the film school? And it's, you know, you say a grad student project, right? So is this, like the only way that you get to graduate <laughs> if you finish this this film and that this is what it is or tell me a little bit about more of your experience and the part that the institute plays you know in this because I know of course um, everywhere except seemingly the United States there is a lot of government support of mm -hmm. filmmaking and so does that play into the you know the Academy itself as well the film school what's kind of the dynamics, I guess I mm -hmm. would say, behind this. Like, absolutely. Like, in, in our German Film and Television Academy, like, free graduates are able to, like, to finish the film school with the full-length uh, film, and we were one of them, so we were lucky to, to get this funding. Okay. And, um, you know, so, so it was... It was it was very special, and and we didn't feel like it's a student movie at all. Not mm, yeah, exactly. So and we also said uh, when we when we do that film, uh, no one cares about <coughs> uh, the money, how much money you have. So we said okay, we need to really uh, we want to push and we want to make the uh, a film for the big screen. Yeah. And so the the production value of that film uh, is looking way more uh, is higher than it. Um, well, I saw some of the stills, and I was like, "This doesn't look like yeah. well, what is a student film supposed yeah. to look yeah. like?" But yeah. this, this doesn't look like maybe what would one would think a stereotypical yeah. um, kind of view of a student film to be. And I mean, it's it's also um, unfortunately our producer uh, Ibrahim Utku Erdogan, he's not able to come here. So, um, but he he helped us with that film a lot, and he uh, he managed to give us this opportunity to do what we want. Yeah, but and I think that's probably a lot um, to your credit. As well, right, Constantine? Yeah. As a DP, yeah. that it yeah. looks if it looks like yeah. hot, then it's you and can say that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's all yeah. it's all me. You can <laughs> say that. So, um, uh, what's really interesting is, um, I mean, with this uh, with our film school, um, I mean, the budget was very low, and mm. we had so many locations in that film, and it's a film that is not easy to make without money. So, and then in addition to that, the film takes place in Poland. Yeah. So that means uh, it's also like the. The whole um, the the crew is going to Poland, and we shot there. And um, what's interesting with that is uh, we only brought a couple of people from from Germany to Poland, so we had a mixed crew. And the crew uh, we were wor working in in Poland was incredible. And this is I think that film we would never be able to shoot that film in Germany. Yeah. For that, uh, for I mean, because the people were so helpful, and uh, it was after that. I mean. With the people we worked on that film, we are still working. So yeah. it's kind of a, we always say it's a chick family. Yeah. So chick is the the Polish title of the of the film, and it's like a chick family. And um, okay. also our uh, set designer and uh, costume designer uh, are also here on the yeah. festival. And um, so I think it's obviously a testament to the the quality of the film that you were here at South by. Yes. How did that come about? 
were you already familiar with the festival? And then you said, okay, we're going to submit the film. I'm, I'm really curious about that. So I can say I remember the December night when we got the email confirmation that we are invited here. And I remember I was so excited. I couldn't, I couldn't fall asleep that night. Um, and uh, you know, it's such a big chance for us to be with the film and... And this is the first time both of you have been at South by, yes. right? Yeah, exactly. 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 And, you know, like, uh, so we were we were super excited and thankful in that moment. And because we, we both want to shoot film, like, next films in... Uh, in America, so so for, for us, it's like like hopefully like a, a door good launch open. pad. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I was in um in pre-production for another feature film in Colombia, and I got that email there, and I was really, I was, I was blown away by that, and then um, this feature film should um, we should shoot right now at the moment. So, but it got it got postponed to October. So for me now, it was the, I had the chance actually to come here, and for me, it's uh, okay. it was always it was a perfect dream. timing. It, yeah. it was a perfect like lucky coincidence somehow. But for me, it was really uh, always a dream to <laughs> to have a film here in the United States uh, in South by to show it to the to that audience. And because my my one of my biggest um, inspirations uh, are the films where I grew up with, and that is like 80s, 90s. Hollywood cinema. I mean, there's of course like a lot of more, but uh, this, these are the films where I grew up with, and I always that inspired me in terms of the aesthetic and um, everything. So I'm really, I'm really happy that we can that we are here and showing it. Well, that's um, so great, and I'm so glad that you guys are looking to do, you know, more projects here in the the U.S. and more. And I, I guess it's going to be like maybe ideal for you know platforms such as our sponsor Filmio to be able to support filmmakers like you guys especially you know right out of the academy looking to be able to do new things uh, bring together teams in a new you know kind of territory new to you for the US like that's what it's you know kind of all about right absolutely and you know like this is this is also like such a chance because this time after film school is quite sensitive you know and this is this is the you know like the moment when you when when we feel like okay you don't have this like film mm, school bubble so you are like mm, exposed to the very you know true. like like it, like, like in the um mama bird pushing exactly. the baby bird yeah. out of the nest yeah. right it's time to go yeah. do something so it's it's very it's very important important and sensitive time where you really like all that you learn like you go for it like into into the market straight into the film industry and uh, the next project we are planning is called my personal jesus and place in new york and it's an, a story about unusual love relationship between polish girl and mexican gay stripper and it's set in New York. I used to live See, in New I York. I told you, like a Polish, it's like come up with these very cool things where you're like, yeah. how <laughs> did you? <laughs> <laughs> because there's, you know, like like this character, she she escapes her like suffocating mother, like in the in in Poland, and she wants to, she she wants to be like on the other side of the ocean, so far away that it's possible. And in this film, will decompose the American dream because it's not it's not like she wants to make a career here. Um, you know, because we used to have this American dream like back in the 80s in Poland, very, very strong. But now it's about something else. And, and I see it so, so clearly when I, when I talk to, you know, like to, 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 to my peers and to other Polish girls, like what, how, how this is changing. And I think it's something universal, you know, like the moment when you, when you become independent as a person and you're like creating your own future and uh, with all the backgrounds that you that you personally right. have right right so interesting well best of luck on it thank you you guys i hope you have a great time here at south by and in everything that you do you know in your next like kind of level um and really anything else you want to add before we close up is there yeah maybe um maybe one thing about the film um because uh this film this topic of of that film i mean the film has a message yeah and that um for for us it, it's like really important that um that f uh, film uh, is shown here in the states and uh, i mean everywhere because this this topic is about um how you uh handle like a trauma yeah and like a stillbirth or a miscarriage because i mean so many so many friends of us um, around <coughs> are having that yeah. and mm. uh, are experiencing that. And this is something, it's not easy to talk about that, but that film, um, I mean, it should motivate um, everyone like to, 
to, to have maybe word, have that conversation exactly or to feel open and, and not be afraid of um, of that exactly yeah. telling that exactly and also you know like just to that's I do believe that it's like power of cinema you know that people like people have this collective experience by going to the cinema seeing something and it happened to us at the test screening that many women approach us and uh, we're very touched and like well uh, like yeah from from our test audience and wanted to tell more about their stories and i feel i feel like this is so powerful and that's why that's why we are here and we want to share our film you know with right. the audience and with with uh, with the world yeah. right well you guys i just wish you continued success and thank you for stopping thank you, by thank you thank you so and much I hope the jet lag smooth is smooth out a little it bit does. <laughs> um, and you guys definitely stay tuned for the very next interview we have way more coming up this has been lauren delisa coleman for the official filmio filmmakers lounge right here at south by southwest 2024.